Hello and welcome to the Be Glad movement. My name's Pollyanna and I'm on a mission to bring you as many stories as possible of good coming out of bad and reasons to be glad. And today I'm joined by Philippe. Um, as per usual, I'm gonna pretty much just sort of get out of the way and let Philippe dive in with his story of good coming out of bad and reasons to be glad. So Philippe, say hello. Hi Pollyanna, how are you? Really good. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to. Uh, I mean, your day's only just starting. My day's sort of midway through the afternoon, so um, I'm conscious of time. I'll let you get on and, and tell your story. Sure. Thank you. Um, so it was 2000. Uh, oh, it was 2009. I was uh, graduating from law school in the United States. It's a three-year post-grad program. And okay. so I was wrapping up my, um, I just graduated and I was studying for the bar, which is right how lawyers become admitted in the United States to practice. And it's a big to do. And I was heading to a bar with a friend of mine an, you know, a pub bar, not like not the lawyer lawyer bar, um, to just have a drink. And I'm on the subway in Washington D.C. and we're talking, and this woman uh, just approaches me, and I don't you know know her, and she says, uh, "Excuse me, I hope you don't mind me saying so, but I'm a nurse, and I think you have a thyroid problem." And I was, but taken taken aback I was like oh kind of what are you you know what are you talking about and then she said that she had noticed just from when she was sitting on the subway that I had a lump in my throat so wow. I got to the bar and immediately <laughs> ran to the bathroom to look in the mirror and you know there there it was uh I think I thought I hadn't given it any thought, but I just right assumed it's where an, our Adam's apple would be. So that's just what it, what it was. Um, I immediately sped through all of the, you know, great. I'm 27 years old, and now I'm going to die of neck cancer. You know, not not sure. Um, wound up going up to New York and seeing a bunch of doctors, uh, and found out that I did have a, a tumor. It wasn't cancerous at the time. Fine. So they let it be. We'll watch it. It's okay. Um, and so that's what I that's what I did. And I had it for about three years. And I went back to you know I would go for checkups and I went back to a doctor when I was. I, third year at my law firm and life was very challenging. I was working a lot. It was, it was tough, but I had stuck to this path, right? I had worked really hard and invested in it, so I was moving forward. Um, I went to the doctor and they said that uh, there were some questionable cells and so they thought this would be as good a time as any to remove it. And nice. so I had, you know, I had the insurance, which as you may know, right in the United States, full insurance is a, is a thing. Uh, it's an issue that we face. So I had the insurance at the time. I could insurance time and, you know, I could take off work. So I, I went ahead and I did the surgery to have my thyroid removed. And at, I was 30 years old when this happened, um, uh -huh. like 29. Um, mm -hmm. The physical surgery wasn't that bad. Uh, I mean, I think it was challenging. For, I think it was more complicated than the surgeon expected. And he wound up removing my whole thyroid, which wasn't a given when they put me under. They weren't uh -huh. sure what they'd find. Right. Um, but so they wound up, you know, I woke up and they're like, hey, you don't have a thyroid anymore. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and there's a, a replacement pill that you can take. 
um, that replaces the uh, hormone that the thyroid produces that regulates our our um, metabolism. I mean, it does so uh, it does so much. Um, the physical recovery was like pretty pretty quick, but taking time to get my body acclimated to a dosage level and figuring out what that level was like. The way that they do that is doctors will start you on a lower dosage right? and then wait six weeks and then up it again and wait six weeks and up it again. And so I spent about a year not really feeling like myself. Sure. I, I gained like 30 pounds, you know, 15 kilos. I like emotionally, I was all over the place. It was a really um, challenging and difficult time. Just what not, not having that hormone in my body. And it was foggy. Uh, it just threw me for a real loop. Right. Um, that was hard for me. Like weighed on my relationship with my then girlfriend. Uh, and it made doing my job much harder is to be a, a corporate lawyer. So to be a corporate lawyer in New York city and being expected to work, you know, these insane hours and to spend, you know, 16 hours focused on a very dry like, contract, right. You're just like reading page long sentences. And so to be asked to do that when my mind wasn't really capable of focusing when I was like cloudy and tired and like emotioning all over the place. It made it much harder for me to, let's say, force myself to do this job that I hadn't really wanted to do for a long, you know, really ever. But um, I had up until that point, like had enough willpower reserves or it should to keep myself going. Um, and so I wound up leaving my job. Um, so I think this comes to the, like, the, like being a turn into something good for me. And now, right in hindsight, this is now five years ago. Um, yeah. Looking back on it, 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 having my thyroid removed and what it did to my body, what it made it made no longer possible, which was to continue living this life that I thought that I should be living. Uh, what it then made possible for me was to open up to a different possibility to step into uncertainty. Okay, if not this, then what? And wow. I went you know, down to a a retreat in Costa Rica um, for a week just to take a break. And, I, you know, I came back to New York feeling different, feeling it was very different. And it was really hard. It was years of, you know, then figuring out, well, what is it that I wanted to do? It was important for me. Taking, I think, to retreat, attack, so I would say, okay, if not this, then maybe I can tolerate this is one of my Rich's questions um, that I really like, which is, what are you tolerating? And when I heard that question uh, a couple months ago, it immediately made me think of this process of, okay, I know I can't do this anymore, but I'm still afraid. So what about this? Maybe this job will be okay these hours. And this, no, that's not going to work. And then, well, maybe this, can I tolerate this until... Um, about two years ago, I finally had a moment on the subway going into the office where I, I was done asking myself that question of Hi. what am I willing to tolerate and instead ask, what can this be? Like, what can my life be? What can, what can I do with it? How can I create like joy and happiness and live with purpose and serve and that's a five-year stretch uh, uh, a lot of things happening in, in between but 
what really broke this open for me was was my thyroid. Sure, sure. And how amazing that that lady should just notice on the train. You know, she, the fact that she came over and spoke to you about it and brought your attention to it so that you could go and seek help. It might have been that it was never looked at until it was too late, you know, so that was phenomenal happening in itself. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, how these things sort of progress and then you had to have it removed. And I mean, had, like, oh, yeah, I was... I'm so sorry, I missed that last bit. No, it's, I was, I was getting regular checkups, right? I was going to the doctor every year and i don't think i guess I, I i don't know for sure but how big it was already i don't think that it just there were doctors i had gone to see the doctor and they missed it before and so to have this woman she was a nurse uh to have her notice like just to, to notice just a stranger and uh, what's to notice it and then to have the and i you know i don't know what's going on with her but like me guessing right the i don't know like conviction the desire to right, serve and to help people for that to be so deeply a part of her that she would just stand up and walk up to a stranger and say I think you should take a look at that. Amazing. So cool, so cool. Because it would have been just as easy for her to walk away, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's not her problem, right? And not her responsibility. But I guess I, I guess she thought that I was her responsibility. Oh. And then for you to um, to obviously try and carry on with your career as a as a corporate lawyer, and then the the knock on effects of having your thyroid removed has made you question your whole existence in that field of work to the point where you've decided that it wasn't actually for you. Yeah, um, I knew that it wasn't for me for a long right and like looking back right all the, all the signs and what I what I actually knew uh, at all I had to do it um, I didn't think I really had a choice uh, I felt I felt trapped in it uh, and so this Gate, right, it, it's kind of like my mind was so like set on it and I was so afraid and not knowing and I had trained my mind to be right analytical and rational and all that all that stuff uh, and so my mind had a very firm grip on things and thyroid and having it removed did to my body was it it kind of like knocked it was like a hard reset. It like knocked my mind off of its pedestal for a little bit, like just enough to create a window for me to really like, what am I, what am I doing? What am I doing? Um, I remember I took, I took one week off to recover. I was working. I did work during that week from home, which is, which is really insane. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the week I got back to work, I pulled, uh, and you know, I'm not, I'm not well, like I'm still recovering from surgery. Um, but I felt like I had to go back. And the week that I was back, I pulled an all nighter. Uh, and I did so again the following week. So within two weeks of being back, I had spent at the office and actually she came up to me I did at one point ask a colleague for help 
on something because I was just like overwhelmed and all this was going on and he was standing at my door and he just said he was a couple years senior mm -hmm. but you know we're all we're all there together and he just said no I don't I don't do that no I'm not going to do that and he just walked away wow so so um, I am right the difference for me right, is being in an environment and being around people who take responsibility for like themselves and then like, for people around them for everyone. Sure. Working and care and yeah. crikey. <laughs> big wake-up call right that yeah. you need to be surrounded with people that are actually gonna not only take care of themselves like you say but take care of each other as well because it's unhealthy to be in that kind of cutthroat environment especially when you don't feel like you 100 percent belong there you know mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. but it was really hard it was really hard for years and even as I went through the like awakening of, okay, if not this, then what? And beginning to ask questions and to challenge and to push, it, to to challenge all of the assumptions that were not only holding me into that path, but my friends and family, right? My whole like social network of people who are also conspiring to live in this way. And so all of a sudden being swamped with these bigger questions that I hadn't really had an awareness of before, but then to not really feel like I had anyone to speak to them about, that there was no space for these questions to live in my life. Uh, that was really, really hard. Um, but uh, to what you were just saying, it, it then motivated me. It, it made me realize that I didn't have that kind of support, that community around me. And I was starting from scratch in a sense, but I went out and found people, right, who I could connect to, who were able to create, right, a container and allow me to wonder about these things and to struggle through them and not to have an answer or to consider a life that was completely different than the one that I had been living, like, who didn't have a vested interest in who I had been before sure sure yeah that's so important to have a community around you that will allow you to just be you and to wonder and to change your mind and to like you say think about different questions and whether you do actually or to help you design your life and not judge you yeah. and say no you need to be like this or you need to be like that it's so important to have have them open minds around you to to support you and lift you up so yeah that's great that you found people like that man i agree yeah um, well i didn't know to look for it until a woman on a subway walked up to me and said i think you have a thyroid problem sure sure she's completely she doesn't even know it and she's completely changed your life mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wish I could thank her, um, yeah. but it's out there. I'm I'm hoping my gratitude has made her like it's it's flowing out there. I'm sure she's received it, just not from me directly. <laughs> yeah, what well, goes around comes around, right? <laughs> Good karma. Yeah. Brilliant. I hope so. Mm. Cool. Well, I'm glad that you're feeling a lot happier now that you're out of that corporate rat race. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. Uh, I am a life coach. And <laughs> so, yeah, I've been uh, doing that for a little while now. And I'm, I'm in New York City. I've been traveling for a while, but I have like lightly planted roots in New York City spending time here building community. Uh, but I think my, uh, where I, I fit into this 
this place is in helping to create a space for people to slow down and to wonder about um, questions about things in their life that they may not have given themselves permission to before. So it's you know knowing what that path is like uh, and what it takes to maybe just break break that for a second to like open up a different possibility. Um, I mean, for me, thankfully my body took over. Um, I don't know how long it might've been or if I ever would have gotten through without it or I guess on my, on my own. But uh, that's the thing when I want to provide for other people is just a, a, a container for them to wonder about things that don't seem to have rights in in their lives that's awesome that's awesome yeah so having that lack in your own life has now spurred you on to to give people that time and space to explore their own thoughts and feelings and wonder wonder about these bigger questions to what a meaningful life actually is awesome oh philippe thank you so much for My joining pleasure. us my pleasure i'm glad you're in a happier space now and i hope you'll i know you've still got a few health issues to overcome but um i I hope that they yeah they all get better really soon thank you okay if you if you like this oh no my pleasure thank you so much for joining us if you like this video please do hit the like and subscribe button and you will get notifications when new videos are uploaded you can follow us on instagram twitter and facebook if you search at be glad movement you should be able to find us and follow along please do get in touch if you've got a story that you'd like to share it doesn't matter if it's a story that's similar to somebody else's because i really do believe your story and your voice has the ability to help someone in their time of need Thank you for joining us and I look forward to seeing you in another episode. Many thanks.